Greetings, this is August 23rd at 12 a.m. I'm looking at data collected at uh, 11 p.m. on the 22nd, uh, specifically the north flank of the Elephant Hill wildfire, and we can see a lot of red. That means uh, data has been collected within the last six hours showing new hot spots, and we'll look specifically at the area just south of North Bonaparte Road uh, on the Bonaparte Plateau and the uh, area to the north of Young Lake uh, near Spectacle Lakes and the Sharp Wreck site. Uh, here we are zoomed in uh, at four major areas of concentration plus a few outliers near Pressy Lake and southeast of Pressy Lake. Uh, primarily in the forest station just south west of Tin Cup Mountain, uh, another grouping around Sodium, Marsden, and Hutchinson Lake, then the entire length of the Rayfield River from North Bonaparte Road south to the Bonaparte Valley, uh, that has extensive new hotspots and we are also looking at this area now north of Young Lake and surrounding Young Lake. Zooming in we can see the area around Young Lake and to the north uh, the Moose Lake wreck site and to the northeast Spectacle Lakes and the Sharp wreck site. We are also looking at 10 uh, very recent hot spots in the immediate vicinity south of Young Lake and to the northwest and west of Lunch Lake. These infrared hot spots have now moved within nine kilometers of Egan Lake to the northeast. We're pulling back again, uh, looking at the area north and south of Upper Loon Lake, and we see a uh, a grouping of about four or five hot spots uh, that are again challenging vedette. Uh, they're within a kilometer and a half to two kilometers. They have been persistent and they're popping up again with new hot spots. And again, I'm interpreting the wind data with uh, the heat that we've had today, a uh, south breeze coming up it uh, quickly dried everything out and added some oxygen to the fires that were smoldering. We're now looking at the radiative power data and this shows us where the intensity is, where the hottest spots are. And again you can see northeast of Young Lake in the Spectacle Lakes region and uh, west of the Rayfield River in the center of your screen and also north towards the Tin Cup Mountain I'm seeing some elevated mid-range heat intensity. Let's zoom into the area around Young Lake using this system and those furthest outlying uh, indications to the northeast of Young Lake look the hottest and that is new territory uh, moving up towards Egan Lake approximately nine kilometers to the northeast. So there are areas of forestation in here, uh, pockets of dense brush and bush. Uh, this is a development that we want to stay on top of and make sure that we are prepared if we have continued strong southerly winds. I've tilted the image and we're looking northward at the entire northern flank and this will give you a proximity of the Interlakes area, uh, the proximity to Sheridan and then further east Bridge Lake in the top right of your screen. While we're here I'd like to just zoom in towards Vidette and look at these four uh, radiative power indications approximately two kilometers uh, west of Vedette and we can see some of the forestation that uh, separates Vedette from this uh, most recent uh, development which could be from smoldering material that's popped up again. We are looking at the area south of Hyheum again and 
a lot of these new concentrations around the Barricade Creek area, I believe that's 5040 Road. Uh, for those of you who are local here, you'll know this area far better than I, and uh, you'll know the individual thoroughfares and, and backcountry roads. Hopefully this gives you an overview of where things are happening, but you will want to check the official sources below because they're, they are going to have up-to-date perimeter analysis so that you can see exactly where the fire uh, has progressed or receded from. I'd like to take a look at Windy now and specifically the area around Green Lake and the variation between a couple of different wind models. Here we have the ECM and it's showing five kilometers an hour coming from primarily the north-northwest. And if we jump over to the second model, we can see it's actually coming from the south. And we're looking at about six kilometers coming from the south-southwest. Let's uh, go up in altitude and see if we can see where some of those plumes might be going. Uh, here we have, uh, again, five kilometers an hour coming from the northwest, and that's at approximately 900 meters, 2,000 feet above Green Lake. So this is sh one model is showing a complete opposite direction of the wind. So this is where on-the-ground monitoring uh, is vital in order to uh, plan ahead and uh, organized resources. So we want to check multiple sources of data and get a clear uh, vision of where the fire is moving and where the wind is coming from. I will keep on monitoring the wind patterns and taking a check of the infrared and the radiative power in the area south of Green Lake. However, this is an active wildfire and changes can happen rapidly, so do check with the bulletins at the Caribou Regional District with the TNRD and at BC Wildfire because uh, if you keep looking there, uh, you can get up-to-date uh, warnings and alerts if they see a change in their data. So the fire does appear to be moving, uh, if ever so slowly, north east of Young Lake and we are seeing more intensity and more new hot spots south of Green Lake and south of North Bonaparte Road. Be safe everyone, uh, verify your position and I'll check back with you as soon as possible.